We're being attacked at our southern border. And they don't want to talk about this because the great replacement is real. White Christian Americans, America first patriots, people who believe in conservative core values, they want them out and replace these people think for themselves. This isn't the human 2.0 that they want running around here. The Democrat party claims to be anti-discrimination, yet they want more and more discrimination against certain groups all the time. Are you willing to say that the modern Democrat party embraces racism against white people? Well, I don't think there's any question that they are pushing not just the narrative, but the answers that would be exactly to that point. When you look at the things which this Congress does, the conversation. There is, uh, that is an elected representative. <laughs> His name is uh, Pete Sessions. He's co-signing with Stu Peters, that crazy rabid white nationalist racist who likes to spot off the mouth, say things like there's reverse racism going on in the country and all those white people are being persecuted by the Democratic Party, uh, which consists of majority of white people. Anyways, um, uh, apparently they're under attack, but Pete Sessions looking to appeal to this racist went on with this anecdote about how white folks are being discriminated, watch. What's interesting is that a student who is a white student, captain of his football team, scored a perfect score of 36 on his SAT. He was darn near perfect. He has applied to most, if not all, Ivy League schools and many others. And at every single school, he's being deferred. And he's being deferred by every single one of these schools. Of course he is. And it makes you wonder, makes you wonder whether education has caught on also on being woke. So woke, I'm trying to figure out, Pete, uh, when are white folks gonna get a break in this country? It's just, it's a long time coming. Uh, now, by the way, in case you guys don't know, Stu Peters, a little bit more on him, and also Lauren Witzke, who's been catching a little bit more press lately. Uh, he is her boss, and this is what she's about. White nationalist Lauren Witzke, who was the GOP nominee for the US Senate in Delaware in 20, appeared on a YouTube program called No White Guilt in October. And she assured the host that her boss, far right broadcaster Stu Peters, who you just saw there, shared her concerns that an anti-white system is allowing her white heritage to be destroyed by animals. Again, elected representative Pete Sessions is trying to appeal to that guy. Uh, she went on to say, Stu gets it. He gets the agenda. Apparently, Pete Sessions does as well. Now, Peters also showed up to the AFPAC, the White Nationalist Convention, headed by Nick Fuentes, who also had people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gosar, Wendy Rogers all showed up. But that crowd still won't accept the Stu Peters, Lauren Witzkis of the world that Pete Sessions, I'm gonna come back to him every time, is trying to appeal to. Watch. I really appreciate you guys taking me in, allowing me to be a part of the movement. Um, you know, it's been a, a rough last few days. I've been like crying like a woman. And of course, I did what any rational adult would do and called Mommy Malkin to help me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. Uh, like I said, again, this is a groveling session. I have to pay my penance where penance is due, uh, apologies where they are well-deserved. In fact, I respect uh, our great and merciful leader who has forgiven me, by the way. If, if you're watching this, you dumb c <laughs> Sorry, I thought I should have said that. There's a headline that said, Lauren Whiskey proves that the brain can leave the body by saying that uh, Putin has a Christian whatever. So I photoshopped it to say, Lauren Whiskey proves the brain can leave the body by still not quitting the Stu Peter show. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, babe. <laughs> so there you have the hierarchy of the white nationalists. Lauren Whiskey's trying to appeal and get away from Stu Peters. But Pete Sessions is trying to appeal to those folks who are getting clowned by the rest of these horrible individuals. Uh, what are your thoughts here, Farron? You know, it, it, it's really just so shocking what has happened because 10 years ago, people like uh, Stupiders there and all these other idiots with their little half pack, no Republican politician would have openly touched them with a 10 foot pole. Right, You kept these people at arm's length, you didn't address them, you didn't humor them in any way. But now it's mainstream, now it's real, now they view it as legitimate. And speaking to these people, saying these openly racist things that are completely untrue on a podcast, on a video, is no longer a death sentence for politicians. Again, 10 years ago, 
this would have been the end of your career. You're never gonna win office again, even among Republicans. But this is now the people they pander to. So it, it's just so terrifying about how much has changed in such a short amount of time. I mean, it makes you wonder how horrible things could be in, in two or three years from now as these groups continue to get mainstream acceptance from the Republican Party. And of course, with leadership like Kevin McCarthy that refuses to tell people stay away from these groups, they're gonna embrace them more and more. And it's going to fully encapsulate what is left of that GOP in just a short manner of time. They're searching for power and right now their power is with racists. It always has been, it's just that it's a lot more open now. And if you don't openly do it, you're not a part of the party.